All right, here's the next uh, installment of how I built my gasifier. We're going to talk about the filter drum. Now this, the filter drum, in my opinion, is the most important part of your gasifier. Um, it doesn't matter how perfect, how flawless, how great a gasifier you build, if your filter system is a fail, you're going to have dirty gas, you're going to plug up your, your intake valves, and your motor is going to stop running uh, much, much sooner than you wanted it to. The good news about the filter drum, at least in this style that I built, is that it is by far the simplest part of the entire build process. It's the most important and simplest to build. It's funny, usually those two don't go hand in hand. So, we're going to start off. This is, uh, I've done some research on this, this barrel, and what it turns out to be is they call them salvage drums. So if you're looking for this exact style of barrel, it's called a salvage drum. Um, this one has a quick disconnect on the lid here. You just pop it open uh, to take the lid off. Some are permanent lids, some have a bolt-on lid ring. Um, this one just happens to have a quick disconnect, and I really like it. It's really handy. Um, so, we'll get started. The filter drum is nothing more than just an empty drum uh, that your piping system runs into. And, of course, I was unprepared, so i got to leave the video for a second. Grab another little model here. So, this pipe, my 2-inch automotive exhaust pipe, runs into the bottom of that filter drum almost all the way to the other side. It's about an inch shy of touching the other side of the drum, and then it's fully welded out on the south side here. This pipe is going to be my little model as to what that, that inside pipe looks like. So, I'll come up close here, and what we're looking at is, this is about an inch and a half pipe, mine's 2 inch, but for model's sake it'll work. What I did was, automotive exhaust pipe has a, a weld you can see it's fairly visible where the two halves of the, the pipe was rolled and welded out. That weld makes an excellent guide for drilling holes. So what I did was I followed that weld and I drilled holes. I don't know if you can see this too well. But I followed that weld and I drilled holes all the way down the center of this thing until a point where I drew a line where this was going to stop, where my barrel would slip into the barrel and stop. So I drilled holes down to that and then I alternated the next line. And these are all quarter inch holes. Um, and I drilled about seven rows of them or so, seven or nine rows, so that basically the bottom third of the pipe had holes in it, nothing in the sides of the top. And what I did was I slipped that into my drum, and I pointed those holes, the center row of holes, straight down. And the reason I did that is I wanted the gas to go into this pipe. I also welded a cap on the end. So this end is plugged with just any old piece of plate, whatever you can find. Um, I wanted the gas to go into this pipe, come out the holes, and then filter up through my sawdust drum. Um, but I didn't want to have the holes on the top for fear that the sawdust would collect in it, or if condensation is in this pipe, it can run out into my filter drum. This goes into the filter drum, I want to say about an inch from the bottom, so you can still get your fingers under there to clean out sawdust and things like that. Um, and this filter, this filter drum, is filled with, uh, if you look at my previous videos, it's filled with Douglas fir chainsaw dust. Nothing special, it's not dried, it's still, you know, green, just like it came out of a chainsaw from cutting wood yesterday. It's nothing special. This drum is filled up to about this level. Um, this is, I want to say, like a six or seven gallon drum. Anyhow, and the, the gas goes into that pipe through those quarter inch holes out the bottom, and then it has to muddle its way up through the sawdust. It's being, it's being pulled by, by the, uh, the fan up here, so it's under a vacuum, and it's being pulled up through that sawdust, and that sawdust is your filter media. Uh, I change my sawdust about every five hours of run time or so. Um, not because it's ineffective. I mean, it was still working at the time that I changed it. Um, but I have an incredibly large amount of sawdust uh, that's given away. I can get as much 
much as I want at any time. So I just change it frequently. Um, run times will vary, of course. They'll vary on the size of engine you're running, how much volume of gas you're pulling through the filter. Um, so changing that filter media, the sawdust, uh, will vary indefinitely on you know diameter of pipe, flow rate of your fan, flow rate of the vacuum from the engine you're running. Uh, so there's no exact number I can give you on how long you can run on the sawdust. And again, uh, people have used all sorts of filter material. Um, I've seen some people use rocks and gravel. I've seen some people use wood chips instead of the dust. Um, the most successful gasifier videos I've seen on YouTube that have the absolute most blue perfect flame are all using sawdust. So that was my first choice. It was my only choice. I planned on trying nothing else. Um, I highly recommend sawdust if anybody out there wants to try. So that's all it is. It's an empty drum. Uh, it's got a piece of pipe stuck through it with a cap welded on the end, a bunch of holes drilled in the bottom radius of that pipe, and that's it. Filled up with sawdust. Uh, that's the filter. That's how it works. Again, it's, uh, I cannot stress how simple it was to build, but how incredibly important it is in the gasifier system. So there it is. There's my filter drum. How I made it.